for. It just simply couldn't do anything up against the opposition. But they finally gotten back to this point where they're playing better and they're meshing well again. And that's what we saw last year with them when e United came over to the Sonics and they had that whole, you know, get together with, you know, super taking everybody away from the org and everything <laughs> like that. But I, I mean, once again, there's always that potential. They can always get back to that point. For a lot of you guys at home, you probably don't think about this that often, but this is a 24 seven job. And when you go off to a huge major like worlds or the six invitational and stuff like that, you're there for so very long. And every day from the time that you wake up to the time that you go to bed, you are working, you are playing, you are screaming, you are going over VOD. It's so much. So when, you know, a big event like that happens, that time period after a lot of people take that time to decompress yeah. and sometimes yeah, it just enough. catches you wrong. And that's exactly what happened with the Sonics. Well, we'll see if they can bounce back for stage two. For now, though, we'll move on to our first matchup of the day. It's going to be Dark Zero taking on Oxygen. Let's dive into Dark Zero a little bit. This is a team that is, again, we like to say methodical to a fault sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's a team that's that's certainly got a chance to go through for the major, but they need a little something extra, I feel like, to get them over the line. Uh, Jacob, what do you think that is? I mean, their game against uh, Exit on Clubhouse yesterday kind of felt like it was standard fare for club and a lot of factors because that map has been twisted and turned into something completely different from what we expected mm -hmm. because of attacker repick, something that Exit have been using essentially perfectly because of the way they've played so far. Their attacks have been near flawless over the past couple of games. They still haven't lost more than two attacks over the course of one game in the five game win streak that they've been on. So for Dark Zero, the counter for that was to try to get, uh, I use the word swifty, but they, they it, whether it was <laughs> roaming or it was word. run out, they wanted to find something to disrupt those attacks and they had the right idea when Pambazoo especially had, like well, the couple of plays we highlighted from yesterday where he had those run outs, there was some of that early aggression. Be Clubhouse isn't necessarily a very roam favored map in a lot of circumstances. However, they tried it, but the mid game still wasn't something that they could capitalize on. If Pambazoo yeah. was opening something up, they weren't able to like follow through all the way to the very end. So I, I think something to highlight with that though is that for Dark Zero, Pambazoo was the only one that was making active plays. Yeah. Tell me another player from yesterday that was doing anything like what Pambazoo was doing. Nobody else or was backing with him, him up. Yeah. Wasn't exactly. Much, was there. He, he's yeah. off on his own island doing these things, and that's so exploitative for Xset because while they play extremely well as a team, I mean, even if we look through some of these clips, you can see Spirits holding down lounge and setting up cuts to make things very difficult on Pambazoo and the rest of Dark Zero, and they weren't ready for it. They got taken down in a very decisive manner. Manner. It was it was not very well done from Dark Zero in a lot of different senses yesterday because they knew what Xset was more than likely game planning for going into that matchup and they just didn't adhere the call. That's the biggest thing. And now going into today, that's going to be the problem with Oxygen. Well, the thing is too is is uh, Dark Zero finds themselves in a position where if they lose today, that's it. Mm -hmm. They cannot make the major if they lose today to Oxygen. And you know, in that in that win or or you know don't go on situation, you probably don't want to be facing Oxygen as your opponent. But that is what it is. Uh, you know, at least they've got the veteran uh, in Canadian to try to kind of continue to lead things. Obviously, great IGL, um, but is it going to be enough to get them through today? It's, it's. I, I feel like a lot of people would bet on oxygen. We'll see what the coin says later, of course. But, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> that's the real. That's the real person to ask in the room. Yeah, I think I think it would be. Would you call it an upset if Dark Zero wins? I absolutely. Think have to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, Oxygen has been playing incredible this entire stage, and I think they've shown quite a few people that uh, you know, if you're on the same page as the team, you can really achieve whatever you want to. Very early in the stage, we saw them use Newers very aggressively, and then yesterday, Newers is completely shut down to the point where he's yeah. 0 and 10, but Dream and Vertical are still able to pull a rabbit out of a hat. You don't get that X factor with many teams, and Oxygen have that right now, and. I mean, analyst Stokes here. I don't know how you stop that. I, I really don't. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's going to take a Herculean effort from Dark Zero to win this. Seems that way. Well, let's talk about Oxygen a little bit. Uh, yesterday, again, the big story with that team as we finished watching uh, Dark Zero here getting ready. But Oxygen, uh, this squad yesterday, they got the win. But again, Newers had a pretty rough day. I believe he ended up 3-11 and 11 at the end of the day as far as kills to deaths. Not a position we're used to seeing Newers in based on his results this stage. Again, Oxygen has enough great players on an individual level to make up for that. Right. And that might get you through to the major in NAL. But once you get to that major, I think everybody's going to kind of need to be firing at all cylinders. Yeah, the fact that they still walked away with two wins and five points in games where Newers was uh, at the very least like 0-6, like for an entire half, right. he wasn't able to find any kills that happened in the Parabellum game on Cafe and in the Border game against the Sonics. Now, granted, trying to play defense on Border, if you allow the attackers to get into the building, is a completely different beast to deal with. It took OXG a considerable amount of time to knock Sonics off that pedestal. When they finally did, that was because of Vertical's efforts and because Newers finally 
finally woke up at the very back end. It's only a little concerning in Newer's case, Fox, you good, bro? <laughs> are you crying or are you vibing? I can't tell what you're doing. He's getting himself psyched up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he should be because the way this team has been playing is awesome, but Newer's okay. finally <laughs> having that resurgence at the very, very end of the day is, is great, but that performance needs to be more consistent. There needs to be something like harkening back to the oh. way that he used to play in the previous couple of games in order for this team to really keep on having the same kind of powerhouse mentality that they had from earlier. Well, let's sleep. talk about the man on the screen right now. Vertical yesterday, getting the MVP, uh, putting on an amazing performance as well. And this is going to be another day where, you know, I feel like you're going to need him to perform. But at least, you know, he's got the ability. Yeah, and oh, knew that boy right. does he have the ability, Doa. Totally let's, <laughs> let's talk about that for a second. If I was to tell you that the difference between the first player and second player in the league is almost 0.2 in rating, what would you think about that? That's I mean, pretty crazy, huh? Right? I mean, isn't he something like 20-plus uh, kills ahead of the second-place person? He is yeah, uh, yeah. currently like, plus 42, and Yaga, who's currently the oh, yeah. second best in the league right now, is at plus 24. So Yeah, yes. I was going to say, yeah. It's absolutely insane. And speaking of his stats, we got them up for you guys on the screen now. This is from his matchup yesterday, and it actually was an incredible game, as you can see. 18 kills, 8 deaths, a cost of 83%, and no opening deaths, only opening kills. That's what you want to see from Vertical. All of this is built up to the point where he's been able to keep this so consistent throughout the entire stage that he's at a rating of a 1.51 for the entirety of the stage. I have never seen anybody have that high of a rating in the entirety that I have consumed Rainbow Six content. It could be a record-setting stage for Vertical, couldn't it? Yes. Very well could be. Right now, if we take a look at, like, individually, he has the single highest NAL rating that we would have seen for any split if the season were to end right now at that 1.51. Like you mentioned, like 0.19 over any other like competition in the field. That's like Kino, Yaga, Iconic, any of those guys currently in the overall leaderboard. And still the best attacking and defensive player overall if we were to just separate those rounds into what he's doing on both sides of the ball. Actually, believe it or not, he's in contention with Shuttle for the best attacking player currently, just from a ratings perspective. He's right there in the midst of it. He's trying to get that MVP award that he didn't get back in stage three of last year when he was in contention for hot and cold. He's trying to put this entire league on his back and he's doing a pretty good job. Certainly is. Well, I think it's going to be time soon to check out the map bands. We're not quite there yet, but uh, we'll be able to see where they're going to end up playing. Uh, but this, I, I feel like today the theme is get newers more involved. Find a way to make newers excel again, right? I mean, yeah. he's had a couple rough games. Time to get back on track if you really want to look strong going to the major, you know? Absolutely, and I'm happy that you brought that up as well because his last two weeks haven't been the brightest. I mean, Newers is still an yeah. incredible player. Every time that we see him play, even if he doesn't get a kill, the mechanics still look crispy, let's be honest, right? It's, <laughs> right. it's a fun watch, but we'd much his rather... is good. But. Exactly, exactly, but we'd much rather see him being active, getting kills, being a part of the team instead of having a 6-6 six, six score line or something like that. We want to see him, you know, punch with the best like he was initially, but the big thing is is that they're still winning games, and that's what matters at the end of the day. The, the stats, we can talk about those all we want to but if whatever he is doing is helping them be successful just keep on keeping on yep that's right well the maps are ready so let's find out where we're going to go as we get started here any any predictions you want to make jacob any any uh, assumptions you want to throw out there obviously not bank but, uh, <laughs> but what do you think uh, no, nothing necessarily comes to mind i feel like both teams have faced each other often enough that they could take each other to a myriad of maps and it probably would still like meet with the same result i don't think we're going to see a new map in this contest given how both teams have it's not that auction have necessarily avoided it but they've not tried bo uh, border they've not tried skyscraper i'm pretty sure we'll stick to something that both teams at this point already know and love so no bank obviously no sky we'll see how this keeps on progressing no more villa dark zero have already decided because of their recent results they're one one on that bad boy they'd rather not try it again against the titans that are oxg at the minute so in oxg's case it probably would have been a half decent one because it's not one that they've played thus far but they do have a hundred percent banner on it so it's it now means that oxg can figure out other things in the pool that they'd like to try as well chalet out of the mix is something that i mean for oxg i think i, I genuinely think that they're probably one of the best chalet teams that we've got in the nal at the minute but they're going to save that one for a rainy day they don't want to take it out against dark zero especially if oxg is touted to go to the they'd rather save that for better competition no cafe in the mix i that's a map oxg 
SSG have played so far twice. They beat Parabellum on it in overtime and just barely lost it to SSG to pocket strats last week. So probably not something that they're pretty relieved to no longer have that one in the pool. No club, which also now looks towards only two maps remaining. We're looking at Oregon and we are still looking at which one do we still have left? The theme, theme park. park. So yeah. we're either going new map or we're going ones that we've seen these two teams play on in the past. In fact, both teams would have played Oregon previously and theme park is genuinely an unknown because neither Dark Zero nor Oxygen so far have played it in this stage. It's been like the most played map this stage from the entirety of the league, but we've not Mostly seen Mostly TSM these though. Ones. I mean, it, it still is, but every other team yeah. like, th that they faced was able to get some shops on it. Right. But OXG don't like it. They'd rather Oregon. take Oregon. So here's right. a bit of the stake for it then. OXG won 5-1 on their defensive half last time they played Oregon, which was in this stage, which is fantastic for Oregon because sometimes that does actually have a bit of an attacker split because of attacker repick. And in Dark Zero's case, they're not quite so lucky. They played it one time and they lost it one time. So just mm. from a map point of view, OXG already have a bit of an advantage here. All right, Stokes, what you, what's your opinion on the map? Uh, you know, I think it could really go either way just because of how Oregon plays. Uh, you know, it, it's a very, very weird one. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, I think that Dark Zero is going to have a pretty good shot at this. But I okay. still got to give it to Oxygen. You know, they've, again, they've just Oh, well, so wait, wait, wait a second. <laughs> We're not to predictions <laughs> quite yet. Oh, I know dare you, Noah. Analyst Stokes, Analyst Stokes out there. wants sorry, to get out yeah, ahead sorry. of it. Yeah. I, got, I got sidetracked. <laughs> Look at my stats. I don't know if you guys know this. This job's kind of hard. It's a little difficult. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, casting's pretty tough, too. You know. It can be, but, uh, you know, you Throwing just kind of talk about it. Fire. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, multi talented person. <laughs> or two <laughs> different people. I've never seen Caster Stokes and Analyst Stokes in the same place. That true. is true. Yeah. In fact, if we, if we were to cut over to the desk right now, we would, in fact, see Caster Stokes sitting right next to Blue. But uh, I, I believe so. Yeah. Let's go over to our casters and, and uh, see what they've got. I believe it's Blue and Stokes over there uh, just getting ready. Uh, wait hello. a second. That's Stokes, blue. where's where's Stokes? John, are you Sto solo casting today? Caster Stokes is invisible today. He'll be uh, he'll be joining us Wait. via audio feed only. So Wait, you don't think? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, got you. Don't yeah, think yeah. this guy's the same? No, Stokes, no, 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 absolutely you? not. Completely different oh, okay, person. Right. I've never met that man in my life. They have different tattoos. So. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And first, I first, I'm from Nebraska, so oh, I, 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 okay, I can't possibly got it, got be got the same person. Yeah, like out there. Caster Stokes is from oh. Ohio, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's like the same thing as Iowa, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like, okay, but, yeah. but well, I wouldn't know about that guy anyway, so. All right, well, there you have it. Making people in the Midwest, Midwest mad by saying their states are the same. It's always, <laughs> it's always something that you have to watch out for. Trust me, I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> Blue, who's going to win this match? Uh, for me, it's going to be leaning towards Oxygen. Actually, I think this match is fairly similar to the game that Dark Zero played versus Xset yesterday, and that Xset is playing a very similar style to Oxygen right now. I think Oxygen is a little bit more put together, and they're capable ability to use that strategy though and since the map is going to be fairly similar I think it's going to be very close I think Dark Zero has a very good chance of taking it but in my personal opinion I think Oxygen is just barely going to be able to squeak this one out in their own favor all right so one for Oxygen I think that's the way a lot of us are going to go yeah. uh I'll go ahead and go to you first because you have you have trouble waiting for this kind of thing apparently so so who's, <laughs> who do you think is going to win I'm just I'm, it's the anticipation the excitement <laughs> you know uh, -huh. uh it's it's got to be Oxygen though uh, same right. reasoning I think that they play a very similar style to XN and it's something that Dark Zero have always struggled to wrap their head around sure. and I think it's once again going to be their fall today all right, another one for Oxygen. Jacob, you going to rock the boat? Or you gonna no, go no, there? no. I'll, I'll, I'll keep the boat afloat. We'll just <laughs> we'll, we'll have the same one going over and over again. And my All main right. reason is just looking at attack versus defensive stats. Oxygen are still one of the best attacking teams in the league right now. Sure. We saw what Exit have been able to do. Obviously, like their win rate is phenomenal. But OXG have kind of written the book. I feel like Exit are kind of utilizing the things that OXG have done historically in the past. And I think that's going to carry them to a win today. OXG on a map like this, in spite of Dark Zero starting on the attacking side, still, even... Even once we make that shift, I still think Dark DZ's attacks overall look slow to a point. I don't know if folks you're going to have a counter for it, though. All right. Well, I just received word from somewhere out there in the universe. Jesse has contacted me, and he what? says he also picks oxygen. Shocker. That's right. He's alive? Yep. He, he is. He's out there somewhere. Yeah. I should have done a better job. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's, he's with us right now in, in spirit. But he spoke to me. Jesse speaks to, I'm not going crazy. Jesse spoke to me <laughs> and he said that he picked oxygen. There you go. So that's, that's his I mean, he's, yeah, he has to find a way to dig that 50% uh, prediction rate out of the gutter somehow. True. So what it's I, true. And we still have the coin. We still have the coin here. Heads will be dark zero. Of course, they are on the left side of the graphic and tails is going to be uh, oxygen. So let's go ahead and flip it. 
Oh, that was a high one. Heads, 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 heads. It is tails. No, tails coin never fails. Says oxygen. All right, the coin had a couple wrong ones last. Uh, yeah, last the coin day. Was yesterday, yesterday is what you call it as well. <laughs> um, and and it got a couple wrong. So I think the coin's coming back today again. I am only the vessel. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But let's uh, check out our community poll, see what you have to mull over as we get ready for our first map of the day. Will Vertical get his 100th kill today? Yes or no? Ooh. He would need a lot of kills to get to 100 today. He oh. actually wouldn't need that many. I don't think so. Let me, let, He's I'll, at 87 right now. Oh, so he okay. needs so 13. It's actually really possible. So, so yeah. it'd just be a casual 13 bomb from Vertical. That casual. would never happen. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Easy. easy. Usually, I would every second of that person. Usually, if we have some player get to 100 kills, it happens on the very last day because you have to let you have to split. If we only have nine games played, it means that you have to have essentially dropped the equivalent of like 12 to 13 kills or more per game to cross that 100 kill threshold. But Vertical again had 18 yesterday, so maybe he can do it. It's a uh, pretty incredible stuff. So we'll watch Vertical. We'll see if he can get it done. In the meantime, go ahead and let us know. Uh, vote in the community poll. Uh, R6 Esports NA is Twitter and Instagram, so you can engage with us on those platforms. That sounded very corporate what I just said. You can engage with us on those platforms. <laughs> I just tweeted it. Are you in a boardroom right now? I don't know. I, I, yeah, I sure look you, like you it. You have a I? PowerPoint behind you and everything. It's, it's can we change blazer. that blazer. It's just making me feel so formal right now. Uh, yeah. Look at that. The shorts as well he's got going on. Like very formal. You didn't they have don't to even know. You just don't exposed know. it, guys, bro. Guys, you, <laughs> look at. Oh, wow. oh I, wow. I have legs. It's crazy. This stream, crazy. This stream is now rated R. <laughs> it's, it's getting hot in here, so we better send it to a break. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be Dark Zero versus Oxygen when we come back here at R6 NAL. be nothing maybe i should take that advice go get a life or maybe get a job or something pack it up and head back home tell everybody i was bluffing or maybe i'll just get out my head and focus on what i know's coming yeah cause i can't fall asleep at night without seeing my dreams Delusion and reality, I'm somewhere in between. These voices in my head get loud and they keep telling me that I'm a fool for trusting in these wings. But maybe, baby, this will fly. Drinking themselves crazy tonight. <laughs> Maybe I should call and say, Told you I'd be right. Wondering how long it was before you realized the biggest mistake of your life. And now you're paying the price. Oh, is it confidence or confusion? Either way, I feel like I ain't never losing. Your And welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the North American League. Getting ready to jump into our first matchup of the day. I've got Caster Stokes back with me now. He's made his long journey from the phone call he was on earlier, and now he's arrived. How is uh, how are you feeling? And how how is how first of all, how is it meeting your twin? Uh, well, first things first, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I've never met him before. He's kind of a weird guy. I, I think it's because he's mostly from Nebraska, but like, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, at the end of the day, he's, he's a pretty genuine dude. Yeah. I think I think he said some stuff, you know, some smart stuff, some dumb stuff. It's it's to be expected, right? First time. All right, well, let's focus up now on this matchup here, as it's bound to be quite a good one if it's anything close to the caliber of the exit game that Dark Zero played yesterday. A lot of the stakes are going to be fairly similar, in my opinion. The map style as well going to align quite well. We saw that game yesterday played on Clubhouse. This one is going to go to Oregon, and of course, we saw their opponent being exit. Today, they're facing off against Oxygen, who plays that very similar style, but with some slight differences, more so in how it all comes together towards the end of the round. Expect a much more explosive ending to the attacks on Oxygen's 
side of things. And that could be a problem for Dark Zero. They struggled to deal with that on quite a few rounds in yesterday's game. Yeah, I don't know if Oxygen are going to give Dark Zero as many windows of opportunity like we saw with Xset yesterday. Because they struggled in quite a few different capacities. But for instance, Pambazoo still had a pretty strong game, able to catch Xset off guard time and time again. But the way that you're talking about, uh, you know, Oxygen, they build things up in a completely different way with their rounds. So there's a lot of ways that this could all go wrong for Dark Zero. But the beauty of that is, John, the map is starting now. So we'll be finding things out quite soon here as Dark Zero and Oxygen get into the lobby. And despite the fact they ultimately lost yesterday's game, I don't think Dark Zero brought a terrible performance to the table. I thought they played very well. It's just Exit was able to get away with quite a few rounds that they had no business doing so. So was able to ultimately win the victory out of that. We'll start off with the bands. Not going to be too surprising considering that we are on Oregon. Ying is knocked out. She's oftentimes that go-to operator for basement attacks and occasionally a large window hop upstairs as well. Knock is an interesting one too because we started to see her used more and more on maps like this one as well as Cafe to have that late insertion from the attacking side and potentially sneak in and catch one or two defenders there. So everything aligning pretty well as we continue on the defensive side with the first band there being Cade. It's a little awkward with the Kaid band coming in, I'll be honest with you. Mostly because we didn't have yeah, anything. Yeah, it doesn't match the attacker. Yeah, bands. we didn't have anything lined up with the offense, but there's more than likely that, you know, something that Dark Zero is concerned about, and that's exactly why they've gotten rid of him. But past that, Mira will be removed on the defense. A big thing to talk past Nook, though, is got to be the Ying being removed. One of her best maps is indeed Oregon, and past that, she recently got a buff to where she has four. Yes, indeed, four Candelas now. So she has so much utility in order to burn with, and she still has that secondary hard breach as well, so she can still get hatches. I would argue the Cade ban is more to just simplify the hatch play mode than anything for Dark Zero here, considering they're starting on the attacking side as well, so they don't want to be forced into potentially playing Maverick and have to work around their hard breach plan, which seems to be relying pretty heavily on Habana, at least off of this first pick. Keep in mind, of course, we do have a re-pick in play, so we could see that get changed up, but I believe it does align with their style. I would. That's that's great that you're saying that, because that's exactly what it is. That Kaid ban is just making it to where they're allowed to play the lineup that they've scrimmed with and that yep. they're comfortable with on this map. With Kaid in play, they would have to bring Thatcher, because uh, or Maverick, obviously, in order to get these hatches open. So now they're allowed to play more of a free-flowing offense. They can kind of move pieces around and hopefully find something that can deal some damage to Oxygen. Another big focus here is going to be this player on your screen now, Newers, who unfortunately faltered a little bit yesterday after so many consistent play days starting off on this OXG roster. We're going to see if he's able to rebound himself today. The good news is things still ended up quite well for the OXG rosters. Other players were able to step up, most notably Vertical, who once again, just like Stage 3 at the end of last year, is playing lights out here inside of domestic play, absolutely thrashing through every single opponent he's gone up against for so far. All Newers with an early engagement showing face towards Shower's hallway, but only be for the contact. No damage going either way. Dark Zero sticking to their guns and strategy from what we've seen from the last handful of play days. Slow beginning, but still the clear coming through, especially for NJR on the top floor currently. Dark Zero still doing their best to try and figure out where these extended players from Oxygen are. There is indeed a Prisma outside that it is kind of a nuisance on the screen in the HUD for all of the offensive players, but they'll more than likely get rid of that momentarily. Vertical continuing to wait for any potential opportunity to catch members of DZ clearing out from that hatch, but more than likely won't bear much fruit from that position here. Fox as well trying to be a little cautious as he crosses back downstairs. Was the possibility he would have been sussed out there, but thankfully not going to be the case. DZ still a little bit too far behind to potentially catch him roaming in that part of the map here. Panda, however, will be working on opening things up a little bit further downstairs as he is going to throw a few of these Rotero drones down, looking to probably deal with what would have been any barbed wire or anything on that back staircase, but not a whole lot to be found. So we'll go hunting for an ADS or something near the pillar room, which there certainly should be one of those or a very similar piece of utility nearby. Aside from that, though, it's all slow here from Dark Zero. Now they've seen that the back stairs is clear. Canadian is going to move in and put this first shield down from the Osa, giving him an entry point, but at the same time, he's got to back immediately up due to the usage of the Toxic Bay from the defense. This is a huge problem now for Oxygen. These positions in which the Osa shields can be laid down, there's no way that they can do anything up against it. No impacts have been brought, no explosives, except for the Nitro Cell on Laxane. So they'll at least be able to damage one position if it comes down to it. But with this last minute building now, Oxygen are sticking to their guns. They've made it all back down into sight, and now they're trying to fight the access points. Dark Zero have done a bang-up job, though, of gaining control. It looks to be a construction attack, especially with that Osa shield on Big 
Big Tower stairs for the counter angle. Red Grenade out for Pillar here, but only does a little bit of damage to Vertical as things start to pop off. Bambazoo will push in. Dream is completely stunned. He'll be taken down, but it's a trade easily for Vertical inside of Pillar. Vert ready for that fight. Now it's Foxy's time to be tested here, and he'll drop the case as Hyper and Vert trade out more blows against each other here. Down to a 3v3 with neither team having a massive advantage inside of this particular engagement, but obviously DZ need to be the one to push this forward, and they're going to succeed at least at the start of the new fight with NJR claiming that first oh. pickup for himself. What a find from Laxing, though, as he takes out not only one with the Nitro, but goes into the hole and pumps out NJR also, leaving just Canadian alive in this 1v2. He's lost the plot. He's been spotted out by that camera. They'll know exactly where he is. What a shot regardless. On to Laxing to trade him out, but time's getting low. Eight seconds left. The pre-fire's there, and it sinks its shot as Newers shuts down the round for OXG. Well, if there was a kill that Newers needed, it had to be the last one. It will be his first, but it's a round deciding <laughs> kill. And yeah, I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta, you gotta hit it every uh, once in a while. Just just drop it to the floor. I was, like, I, I, I was just more like, bro, it's our first round. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, John, well, the vibes are high. The vibes are high. Okay, <laughs> like you you can't you can't get down on these guys. They're six and one in the NAL. They're number true. one in the whole league. True, true, and true. That's with Newers as well, not playing too hot over the you know last four play days. He's been playing pretty mid in comparison to what he you know did initially. So, uh, but we, we talked about that at nauseum on the desk, and not only that, but initially when we got in here, Oxygen don't even need Newers to win games. In fact, really not at all. The team overall plays so well that anybody can step up to the plate. The one that we've seen the most this entire season, it's just been the biggest shining star of consistency in the entirety of the NAL, has to be Vertical. He has been so, so strong this entire stage, constantly making impactful frags for Oxygen. And the biggest thing is, is it always seems like he's alive. His, yep. his KPR is insane at a 1.13. He's almost got a 2.0 KD just flat out. Uh, I mean, the guy is such an incredible player. Oxygen have a stellar team right now. Like, there's there's no way that you can possibly knock them at the current moment. We'll have to see, of course, how things continue to go for this squad, as they'll almost certainly be heading to the Major. In fact, I think that if I remember reading the statistics correctly, this morning. I'm pretty sure they are fully locked in at this point. So, going to be seeing them hopefully heading to the major relatively soon where they'll get their first big test as a team against some of the other regions in terms of the skill that they have to offer. Especially Latam, who, as you guys who at home who follow International Siege will know, they've been kind of dominating the circuit for the past couple of months now, taking nearly every event in the 2021 season except for SI. Uh, well, I, I mean, Uno in EUL might have something to say about that soon. We'll see if uh, Heroic pulls any rabbits out of some hats at the land. I'm excited to see them, man. I have got haven't got to see Uno play on land in so, so long. But back into the matchup now, ladies and gents, as it is Oregon, so these rounds tend to take a little while longer just to start ramping up. But still a lot of info bases to work through for Dark Zero. It'll be a small tower take yet again here. They're more than likely aware that there will be an Oxygen member playing downstairs inside of Kitchen, trying to prevent any nade play or verticality that Dark Zero could possibly muster. And that happens to be vertical in this situation. Yeah, they also saw or rather heard him at the very well, beginning of the Well, they definitely know the he's there now. <laughs> yeah, well, they've seen him with a drone, but even at the start of this phase, they had drones sitting directly next to the drone hold inside a small tower, and they should have been able to hear him running past it. So they were very well aware of the fact that someone was upstairs, even from the very start of this phase, and you can see them proceeding justly with Dark Zero taking a very, very slow clear, focusing mainly on the big window play at this point. Obviously, they want to get access to that area at the bottom of White Stair, where vertical is currently holding, and Foxe as well at the bottom of Freezer Stairs needs to be accounted for also, but with it just being Hyper, this could be a bit dodgy. Nade, I believe, thrown in by Hyper, but not to a lot of success here. Might have ended up going down towards Foxe instead if he's the primary target. And meanwhile, of course, thank you to our observer for pointing this out, we've got Canadian at least attempting to lurk up onto Fox. A vertical, though, jumping down. He's going to get caught down, down, down by Canadian through the wall. Beautifully found. But was he expecting a second player? Oh! Yes, he is. And he shuts out Fox A as well. Great play from Dark Zero. And they're ahead now with a minute to go. This is what we've needed to see from Dark Zero. This is the gameplay that you want. Make some plays. Make some things happen that the opposing team aren't exactly ready for. Huge kills coming out from Dark Zero on Pambazoo. He's adding insult to injury. He'll get two. He's trying to hit fire. The last guy, Laxing, will finally take him down. But what's Laxing worth inside of a one versus four? Eclipse, he's trying to put the case down, but it's quickly ended from Dark Zero as Laxing tries to peek back out of the attic. He'll lose his life, and Dark Zero will gain the round.
Beautiful play from Dark Zero. Knew exactly what the setup was looking like from the very start of their action phase and took quite a while to do it. That's kind of a Dark Zero trademark, obviously, but had no problem executing upon it when they finally got to the positions they needed to to follow through. Canadian, especially inside of the basement, they were coming out huge to deny both of the first floor roamers. And then aside from that, just a clean play into the site due to the fact that OXG no longer had the numbers to sustain out in the open. Yeah, and right there, that is just a hallmark Canadian play overall for his shot call on that. Knowing very, very well how Oxygen are going to look at that site and try and play things out. He recognized so early on that they more than likely had somebody playing downstairs to try and support what was going on in Kitchen for like a late flank or something like that. And also the fact that more than likely Vertical's escape hatch was security. It makes the most sense, and that's what a lot of teams do with that setup. So why wouldn't he be playing that? And well, he was right. Not only once, but twice. And past that, I mean, there's really not anything that Oxygen can do in that situation. Really, your only hope is that you shut down the entries that are going to be pushing your site pretty quickly uh, because it, there's that little grace period as well in between, right? Like, yep. all that action happens downstairs. Everybody's freaking out, trying to get comms through, and then all of a sudden, you're also getting hit right in the face on site. It's There's too many cooks in the kitchen at that point trying to get information across and just makes things really, really difficult. So uh, very well done from Dark Zero there to really stretch out Oxygen and force them into a bad situation. Yeah, DZ, unfortunately, for Oxygen, having full access to both the white stairs and big window entry points, too, that gave them a very safe route to get into the site from the get-go of the round after they picked up those two kills. And then it was fairly easy to collapse at that point with the amount of control they had. Going to need to go for an upstairs clear again here for Dark Zero, but it's going to be much earlier on in the round, as this time the upstairs play is the extended play for Oxygen, as we got Vertical and at least one other player trying to hold on to this position, with quite a few reinforcements considered on this one as well. You can see at least that closet wall getting fully blastered, as well as the one leading towards Attic. But the hold itself, of course, is going to be downstairs on the first floor. The members of Oxygen choosing not to replay the second floor site due to the one-sided nature of it and trying their tertiary site instead. And Dark Zero will be working the Thatcher in, so that kind of goes back to the question of what really happened with the Kaid ban, but I'm sure that's for another day. Drones now for Dark Zero will be clearing out and meeting, or actually I believe downstairs they could potentially run into Foxe, who's currently prone inside of, I believe, Freezer Hallway, if I know my maps correctly from looking at the top floor. Frag Grenade's in for security. Dream's not going to take too much damage. Hyper is looking further past, though. He's looking for the upstairs play instead. That nade just locking down that door for the time being for him to make it across. EE1D out for Canadian. No movement from Oxygen, all except for the far player over near stage. Pambazoo might be going for the pinch soon here as the breaching charge comes out. Hyper has the angle, and Vertical will walk right into it. Still have one more upstairs, but Newers will drop and cover his fall with some bullets. Shoot those off, make sure that nobody knows that he's made that adjustment, but they'll more than likely have dorms under their control very quickly. Clips waiting for a top-down opportunity here, but not going to find anyone exposed from the auction side of things. There's the other end of it right there from Nur's point of view. Once again, denying the drone intel is more than flood in, but at the same time, he'll also be revealed. NJR will try to knock him out with a nade, and he'll oh. land perfectly to destroy him in this round. That's the first kill, or second kill, excuse me, coming in with just under a minute to go. Foxy trying to resist some of this dissentment now as he throws an impact out and tries to get some damage going on to one of the DZ attackers, but fairly minimal impact being found from that. The plant now going down for Eclipse. There was a Toxic Babe thrown in, but no more are going to bleed out as now Canadian has isolated out Dream and taken him down. Plant confirmed by Eclipse. The Toxic Babe stems nothing back, and it's only Laxing and Fox they left alive here with really no positioning to play this retake for, let alone stop the strength of the post plant positions that Dark Zero have upstairs. This has been so well done from Dark Zero. Almost an impossible 2v5 situation. Make it a 2v1. Yeah. Make it a... Well, there you go. It's going to end as Dark Zero quickly grasp the flawless round past the plant and very well done round from them overall quickly into taking top control that's what i like about that they recognize that there was more than likely only going to be you know that defensive standpoint upstairs around the dorms area and as quickly as they were able to get their players into attic as well as hyper up white stairs in the situation that he had with the security door uh, it just made things so easy for that clear once they have that top control i mean there's really nothing that oxygen can do trying to fight from that mid floor they actually have to try try and go upstairs and try and fight the players that now have that verticality, especially as that plant goes down. And Canadians got the, uh, you know, oversight for that in the position that they had it, as well as the verticality on top of that from upstairs. So there's just way too much for Oxygen to try and deal with past those initial frags. The good news for the Oxygen fans that may be watching at home is they have finally run their rotation and can return to the basement site, which is the only one they've successfully defended so far. So a chance to tie this game up at 2-2. Two to two. 
is very much alive and well here, but they will have to make corrections on their second floor hold or the first floor one that we just saw played out on round number three if they want to outright be able to take the lead here by claiming not only this round itself in the basement hold, but one of the other remaining two after this as well to try and at least get a 3-3 scoreline. Otherwise, Dark Zero more than likely will end up in the lead, oh, and we'll have no. to see how this follows through vertical. Very late on this rotate to get himself to the top of Small Tower. He will make it here, but what kind of position will he be able to maintain between himself and yours now as both Panba and Hyper are coming in for the clear? Vertical, if you live in this position, you listen to me, if you live in this position in the current <laughs> moment, you better count your lucky stars because Dark Zero was on a drone inside of Small Tower right before he entered the room, and nobody got back on it at the beginning of action. Phase. And he's lost in yours now, too. Yeah, they have no idea that he's here uh, because they didn't drone things out. Hyper's drone was inside of the uh, like stacks at the center of the room, but this is going to be freebies. There it is. Pambazoo goes down. Nobody's droning things out properly because Hyper got off of his drone too early. So Hyper will have to back away from this after taking a bit of damage and unfortunately losing his teammate, Panbazoo, now knocked out. And that is going to be the removal of the buck, which of course would have been fairly useful for trying to open up some of these soft breaches. That is also going to be, I believe, never mind, they still have the Habana, so we still have some hard breach to be brought to the table here. And so more of a question of how they get into the building and properly clear this out now is they're going to have to waste another 30, 40 seconds re-droning everything as Noor is more than likely, Noor is, excuse me, more than likely reactivated himself after the vertical play. So they have to be watching out for that now too. Yeah, absolutely. For Dark Zero now as well, with how slow moving they've tended to be on their offenses, this is looking like the dagger that could possibly be ending this round quite nade, early. Nade in, actually going to end up missing the mark as Hyper believed that he could have been close there. He re droned things earlier just to confirm that Vertical's still in the same position, and well, yeah, he's still there. There's not really an easy means in order to get out of that, so Dark Zero is going to try and circumnavigate him and just leave him inside of Small Tower. Hopefully, he doesn't get too much action on the back end because once again this could be the play that ends round four. Or as you can see, they're backing up. Is going to pretty much just be waiting and ready to drop down the freezer hatch in the event he gets challenged over here. And Vertical's like, he's even lost. He's like, yeah, they Vertical's just, like, they just left me. Are they gone? Are they <laughs> just going to let me flank for free? Okay. So he'll have full access to the yellow hallway leading up to those freezer stairs. And we can see a few members of Dark Zero still working on working their way into the basement. Canadian most prominently here, trying to force his way in through construction. He's probably not alone. I would expect one or two players to be with him as he tries to make this push forward. He's going to press himself right up against the electrical wall. Fox A ready for the challenge. He's going to be able to shut down NJR, picks up a second one against Hyper 2, just as he trades out the still rotating newers from upstairs, leaving only Canadian and Eclipse in the fight with just a measly 30 seconds to play it out. Each player needs to get two kills oh. here. Already seen Canadian get taken down, though, with the shotgun. Eclipse will find a nice trade as he finally catches Vertical with only 20 seconds to go in the round. But where does he go from here? That was the easy one. In terms of pushing Canadian further than this, it's going to be nigh impossible for Eclipse to make the impact necessary. He knows the exact position of that player, and he gets a response to it as well. A bit of love from the M590 as his health gets chipped down that much further. And unfortunately, yeah, this is looking futile for him. No time left and Laxing just slowly bleeds his health count away from range with that shotgun. And that's the kind of calls that we expected for Oxygen to be making throughout this game up against Dark Zero. It's what we saw work with Xset yesterday. If you're able to catch them off guard early on in their offensive rounds, they shut down. There was really nothing there that Dark Zero did that was considerable where they looked like they pulled themselves back across the line uh, and all it simply was was a missed drone early in vertical gets a singular kill and then so much time is wasted dark zero doesn't necessarily know how they want to push anything past that point and they're not able to make a decisive enough play down low to actually shut down uh, you know important players like fox a inside yeah. the freezer hallway it just did not come together solid so. solid minute on the clock wasted out specifically because of that vertical play and then basically thinking to themselves how they would potentially work around that and the solution was unfortunately not the best one because they tried to just ignore it which meant they had a permanent flank watch, so not only were they down a player, they were down a second player because of the fact that that player could not be involved immediately, at least, in any fight they tried to take. Yeah, like, even though Vertical just rotated out and got shot uh, for the end there by Eclipse... He still forced he, someone to hold an angle. He was the MVP of that round, yeah. like, through and through. There's there's no way that you can look at it any differently, not only from the kill, but the amount of time wasted in that position. So, for Oxygen, they have to be extremely happy about that. And again, it, it all comes down to one little thing, John, and this is what we say all the time about Siege. It's the little things that get you in trouble. 
a simple misplacement of the drone. A simple, oh well, I got off of cameras a little bit too fast. Yeah, a little bit like a second too early off the camera. That was it. Would have seen him. Yeah, if he if he if he spawns and immediately gets back on camera, he knows verticals in small tower. But it never happened, and nobody re-droned upstairs. Pamazoo drone just goes right into kitchen and tries to find some more info. More vert played the last time. Well, now he's in your small tower, so kind of a problem there. So an unfortunate mistake from Dark Zero cost them another basement attack. The good news is they've had good results on both of the upstairs plays so far. We can see this drone working itself in a T3. Should have been able to see Laxing's position by now. I'm going to assume that it did. No with this hop in coming in. Oh, no, but oh, the Hydrating did oh him, my. though. And JR pre-firing, but Laxing just barely wins the fight with about 30 HP remaining. That's a chaotic start to this round. But once again, it falls into the hands of OXG. Uh, Laxine's so lucky that he had the vector <laughs> there. I don't know if another gun wins that situation. That was so terrifying. Wait, I thought I'm that just Nitro back cell, away from this situation. I, I thought the Nitro had it for sure. I'm like, oh, this is wrap. Super easy pickup for him onto NJR. But once again, Dark Zero, lack of information, and they're punished for it. They'll be able to get rid of this Goyo shield right on the inside of the door and get rid of the deployable shield in there as well. So not Goyo shield. He doesn't have those anymore. It's Goyo canister, rather. Uh, but either way, frag grenades out into Lax. Laxine's new position as he's inside of Attic on a little bit less HP than when he initially had that fight, but he's going to be able to at least stay gun up and assist Oxygen with the potential Dark Zero execute that's building soon. Yeah, both frags now used by Hyper, so no way they can throw a second one against Laxing. Unfortunately, that ADS literally saved his life under these circumstances, so good utility usage coming in from the OXG side of things. That'll keep them at a full five-player strength for probably the foreseeable future until Dark Zero is ready to go for their execute, and unfortunately, even there, things continue to go further into OXG's favor. Noor is shutting down a second member of this Dark Zero roster. They have no further access point except for that connecting doorway. I don't believe they've even gotten walk-in open for themselves just yet here. So at the moment, it is a huge struggle for DC oh. to get anything done. Canadian, though, quickly changes this team's fate, and it's going to continue to go on. Two additional oh. players getting more <laughs> kills, and Canadian just launching the heads off of the members of OXG. They somehow win that round after a terrible start, and the win comes absolutely out of nowhere. Vertical just got put through, it, like, the Samsung spin cycle right there. That <laughs> was ridiculous. Stun in, bounces off the door, gets to the centerpiece of cover, able to play off of that. Vertical doesn't even know that he's made the move inside because he's staying quiet. He's not sprinting. There's so many strong mechanical things that Troy did there that were so very impressive. Listen, this guy might have some age on some of you young guns, but man, can he get down with the best of them. That was a heck of a round. Canadian continuing to lead the charge, topping out the scoreboard at the moment here for Dark Zero at a 7-2 scoreline with Hyper right behind him at 6-2. Great performances from those two players, but it's not just the two of them. Fairly solid ones, fairly solid plays, excuse me, have been coming out of both Panba and Enger, and even Eclipse as well throughout the course of this map. So a very well-played game once again coming out here for DZ, as they seem to be truly finding their strength at the later part of this first stage of the NAL. Meanwhile, for Oxygen, it's now a question of whether they're starting to falter a bit or if it's just the other team's general improvements that are starting to make these matches a bit closer. It's such a hard call, John, because, yeah. you know, we're, we're at round six right now. This is about to be the end of the half for both of these teams, and honestly, what it seems like is both of these teams at the current moment have a player that is able to enact themselves upon a lot of, like, more of these sentry-based players where they're just sitting inside of a certain part of the map, and, like, that's their main job, right? Like, that's all they're supposed to be doing, because think about the last play that we just saw from Canadian. Vertical has to be holding down shower, and then the very next player in line is the the person that's supposed to be holding down things and security and things along those lines. So both of them are finding these players are a little bit more stagnant the way that they have to play, just given the circumstances, and they're able to punish them so, so severely every single time. I mean, we saw the same thing with Oxygen, right? Uh, and what they were able to do to Dark Zero, a simple miss drone, and all of a sudden you've lost the round. Looks like I'm going to try to go for a bit of an intel play there as he hops out, looking hopefully for a member of DZ, but won't be able to find them. So quickly hops himself back in, and we'll get a little bit closer to the site here. Oxy, of course, back on their final defense, now on to another first floor hold. Foxy's position will get scouted out again here, but can also find two drones for his trouble. So bleeding out a good amount of the count there for Dark Zero. Still six remaining, however, so they're not going to be stressed for some time as there's only a minute used up in the round as well here. Hyper seems to be proceeding according to plan. Has found a player and nearly loses his life. 
life in doing so here. Vertical going to come on top of the hatch here to make sure that position is supported and that Hyper will have to think twice about potentially reinserting himself into that angle. Foxay, though, a very unfortunate turn of events. I'm unsure if it was the impact that ended up downing him, but it looks like it might have been the case, and that will be very unfortunate if that ends up being true, but there also might have been a bullet or two that snuck into him there to do the final blow. It actually wasn't Canadian. It was uh, Hyper from behind. The wall's not reinforced for shower. Oh, so, so it bled through the damage. Yeah, Hyper just tagged him to the wall, and that's that's why you saw the spam come through once he got down. Yeah, I saw the like, tracers. Okay. I just didn't know if the impact was too close, and maybe he got unlucky there, but... Yeah, for sure. Especially with, you know, fragmentation and how that tends to go mm. sometimes in Siege. You can just be really random. Either you're carrying a nuclear device or you're carrying a rock. Like, there's <laughs> there's really no difference. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But uh, past that, Oxygen, I mean, they've lost Fox A, but it seems like they might have the potential to still take this round if Newer's late flank through Attic can go off without a hitch. Quite a few Dark Zero members lying in wait here, but does anybody adhere the call? Are they aware? that there is somebody lurking up behind them currently. Newers crossing across the attic. So many targets in the area, target-rich environment. And they'll be holding down attic door. The cross here from the fink of Pambazoo. Newers, can he win it timing out on the here. timing? Oh my goodness, it's back and forth, and he looks down! Pambazoo catches him as he'll hop onto the couch, but Canadian's traded out for it. His dream will find him. Dream keeping the hopes alive here. Eclipse, what are you doing, my man? In the meanwhile here, trying to hold a hard angle in the middle of a Toxic Babe. He loses 90% of his HP by doing oh. that, and he now goes down. That's the case drop. Dream gets a follow-up kill as well. Things are looking bleak for Dark Zero. The oh. Nitro, <laughs> hook, line, and sinker. Bye-bye to NJR. And as well, we'll see the time expire as the last attacker goes down. She tries to save herself, but it's all futile at the end of the day as this round is going to OXG, and they confirm the tied scoreline here at 3-3. Three three. For Oxygen, the, the site play in that round was just incredible. The utility management, the time that they were able to waste early that made it to where the execute went down at, at such a low time frame where the utility could just pull them across the line. Because even think about this, they, they down Hyper at the end of that, but they didn't even kill him. That's the little amount of time that they had yep. inside of that moment. I mean, for, for Oxygen, that's exactly what needed to go down in that situation. The take up top doesn't work. Fox A is down. You just have to play some of those longer angles and try and trust your utility in the setup that your team have devised. And that's exactly what Oxygen did. They trusted each other. They were able to hit some really critical shots, especially for Laxian on the kitchen door. Uh, and for Dark Zero, it was just a little bit too hot initially on the entry, especially for Eclipse's sake. Standing inside of a toxic babe just trying to wait for somebody to you know, PQ, not going to be the best decision at the end of the day. So very closely fought rounds between both teams so far in the first half. Now we get to test them on the other side. However, obviously Dark Zero now on the defensive end and OXG on the attack. No repicks for OXG as they two will be locked into their opening lineup that they showed us in the pick phase there. And are going to carry it forward into this first round here. As far as the defense is concerned, no real surprises there in terms of what they're bringing to the table. Healthy amount of mitigation, healthy amount of delay, and Hyper is the kind of mid-fight fragger if they need to use the smart glasses here to mitigate flashes or any type of potential smoke execute, the latter of which they won't have to worry about, obviously, since Oxygen doesn't have any. Yes, indeed. And now Oxygen out for the very first time on their Oregon offense. And man, are they fast moving. Vertical and Newers already practically through Small Tower. Have a drone inside a kitchen with Fox A. Laxing on. You, thank you guys so much for this camera angle really quickly. I'll explain. Laxing over inside of Garage. The counter angle here. They're clearing across. If anybody had to cross into Lobby, Laxing had them dead to rights. That's what you want from your team. That's a very, very strong clear. Quick, concise. And look at that, guys. Not even a minute off the board. And Oxygen are already in control of the areas that they need in order to get these hatches open. Great control being exercised by the attackers. Still need to be able to work it down and onto the site, however, and that will take some time as only a minute has gone off the clock. Still a pretty healthy amount of drones available for OXG with seven being on the board for them, so they'll definitely want to try and use those as much as possible to suss out the exact setup from Dark Zero downstairs in the basement, and they'll probably use this next 45 seconds or so to make sure they gather all of that. Waxing in the meanwhile still going to be committed to that. The rest of the team going to start probably getting themselves in execute positions, however, because we are getting a little bit closer to the end point on the timer. But for Dark Zero, it's all being held back right now. They're keeping everything close to the chest. They want to play this entirely into their basement hold and only start to challenge on that descent point, whether it be the stairs or the hatch from OXG. Yeah, Dark Zero's entire setup is leading to bleed Oxygen's utility and try and take them out on their execute. 
especially for Hyper's sake. That's the entire reason they brought Warden along for the ride. Pambazoo with a potential big play here. The drone will go down, but he's not going to check it. It could have been it. Vertical's life could have been ended, but kind of a hard ask from the player downstairs in Pillar. Pambazoo will reposition towards Boiler Door and hold this time or hold this position down for the time being. Hyper's going to hit an insane shot, actually. He actually has the M590 as his primary, so hits it with the pistol instead, and he's able to take down Foxy. Fox, a bit of a rough go over these past few oh, rounds. Upstairs. Like always the first. Oh, no. is, how did he even get here? Hyper rotating up like a bandit here. Now taking down vertical as well. A bit low here, so getting a third kill might be a bit too much to ask, but still wasting a massive amount of time. And only just now have we seen yours make up the difference here with his pickup. A little bit of a flub on the nade, of course, is going to hold him back even further. It might not sound like a lot of wasted time, but keep in mind how low the timer already is. He needs to move forward with conviction here. They can't afford to hold back and wait for things anymore, but unfortunately, to some extent, that they have to due to the power position that Hyper is maintaining up on the first floor. Laxing, he'll swing in pretty much solo here, attempt to take control, but it goes pretty much as you'd expect. NJR in the corner going unchecked. He'll get a freebie pickup for himself. Newer is the next to fall. And finally, Dream finishes it out as it's a DZ successful hold off of the back of a great uh, push upstairs in the middle of the round. Yeah, uh, Hyper finding an exit from the basement. We saw him down there initially. I don't know exactly where he skimpered off to, though. I, I feel like I'm doing a disservice. I guess I would guess like Freezer is there. Yeah, that's what maybe? I was thinking. Like, was Freezer? Seems like, it seemed like because I know I know that there was like two people like leaning into that area, like the Freezer itself, and they were pretty close to the stairs. So it's not completely out of the question that one of them just snuck up there at one point. Also, it would make a lot of sense given the kit that he brought that he brought the M590 to play the Freezer staircase. Mm -hmm. You know, because like they're more than likely just going to stun bomb that, and he's able to look through all of yep. that. So they throw all the stuns in. Oh, I'm going to peek the guy. He's blocked. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, so it more than likely was around Freezer. I, I would uh, definitely say so myself as well. But past that point, Dark Zero, they've gathered the lead for the very first time here, and they're looking quite strong in doing so. The Mile come in for the Jaeger here. I want to see how that one works out. It's going to make it to where he can capture a couple more things, but also at the same time, he's going to be at the mercy of the timer in order to get all of those discs. No repicks on the attacking side. Okay, never mind. Laxing is going to switch over towards a no map. How dare you, John? You got to <laughs> wait. Like, it's always when I bring it up that someone does it <laughs> when they don't do it. So he'll end up with that little bit of extra anti room capability in contrast to the additional soft breach they were originally planning to bring. Would have been some extra potential hard breach coming into the lineup as well, but no longer needed, apparently. Instead, we're going to be happy with the six nades and the sledge and play it out from there. Panva. Gonna try to set himself up here. Just that one extra bolt is all he needs to make the hole. Was hoping there'd be someone on the other side, but not at least in his immediate vision. Everyone else from the side of Oxygen gonna be a little bit too well secured there. Whereas in the meanwhile here, getting himself into a bit of an early skirmish potentially as he hops directly in towards White. Here, this player would be Eclipse, but he's going to be well secured inside of security. Somebody better play Eclipse double for playing this position. This is he, this is a actual hell in a cell. They have locked him in yep. with mute jammers. All like, reinforced. Hey, uh, good luck on not dying. Uh, like it, this is now. Now the big thing is is that this is going to require a lot of effort from Oxygen to clear out this position because also they more than likely know and well they do can well they've confirmed now that Canadian is downstairs assisting uh, his player inside of security with the hatch. So he'll be able to. Uh, assist with this cross every once in a while if Oxygen really aren't paying too much attention. It could be a strong thing. Newers or Canadian can just walk right out of freezer stairs and kill someone. That works too. I mean, <laughs> you know, pick your poison, John. <laughs> this is how Siege is. You can sit here and say the craziest strat ever, but everything tends to go your way when you just start shooting people in the face. <laughs> so some great stuff from Canadian. Really finding uh, an aggressive you know, play style today, it seems, for himself it's here. It's been really cool to see happen. He's just taking duels. Like, obviously a little dangerous from time to time, like that big push. We just saw him making freezer stairs. We can't fault it too much because it worked under that circumstance at least. So looking pretty good. The oh. nade's out. It nearly gets NJR in back. The follow-up could still come from vertical. Look like he might have missed the plot a little bit though, but NJR also potentially creeping a bit too close. We'll have to come back to that in a second and see if he can potentially line up that frag. As Unfortunately, he's going to be a little bit too far away from it there with the nade. Air jab goes out though. Fox 8, a little bit too slow to catch it. And oh, Eclipse! Full speed out the doorway, catches Fox A after the air jab is already impacted onto him. He's ready to take the challenge from top side, but okay, there we go. Finally, there's the two player pinch coming from big window as well as the security doorway to finally isolate him out. But Canadian is still in play. They're going to know this, but he is still a factor here and he's going to continue to slow down. OXG's clear. 
Canadian's game sense on time management and just timing in general and when he is supposed to do things has gotten him so many fantastic opportunities throughout this game so far. Vertical's going to get shut down on his push from White Stairs after he'll pick up NJR, but this is still looking like a Dark Zero round. Lacting trying to push in from White Stairs. He has the assistance from Double Window. Can he win the initial fight? He can. The second one, it matters so much. Pamazoo, he'll lock it on. Two headshots for him. Oxygen go down and Dark Zero pull ahead by two rounds. Very, very tense round, even considering how much this looked like it was already under the control of Dark Zero from the very beginning due to the good extended play they had down onto the first floor. But despite that, once again, and this is such an impressive part of auction, they continue to struggle forward and nearly take the round regardless. Just not enough at the end of the day. The hold mainly from Panba inside of the site, just way too strong on top of the massive time and player count that was wasted with the downstairs hold. Oxygen calling in the TAC timeout now as well. And this is going to give us some time, John, to talk about this matchup because Dark Zero have done their homework. Yeah, absolutely the case. And once again, this goes back to the point we we're making at the beginning of the game. They, they were kind of expecting to play a very similar game here today, I think. They obviously wouldn't have known the map, I don't believe, before they directly went into it, so wouldn't have been able to prepare in that extent. But they ended up kind of lucky on that, going to Oregon, which in a lot of ways has some similarities to Clubhouse. So kind of like rerunning things from yesterday, making improvements on the smaller mistakes they were making inside of the gunfights. And it, it seems like all that has really shown through here is they're, they're taking auction to class to an extent right now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, you have like the, the standout players for Dark Zero right now in the likes of Pambazoo and, and Canadian. But the, the other people across the board are getting quite a bit done as well. But they're kind of more of the shadow figures, right? They're off in the background just doing all the nitty gritty stuff. But they still found their mark time and time again. I mean, even Eclipse, the person that has to put the case down whenever they're on the offensive side, is 4-4 four and four at the current moment. So they're all finding their mark, which is something that we could not say about, uh, you know, the last couple of their games. They just haven't been on the same page, but it seems like it's finally starting to sync up, and they're taking it to Oxygen at the current moment. Now, the real question is, what is the uh, the adjustment for Oxygen at this current moment? Yeah, we can see that the usual go-to stars of this team are not necessarily there at the moment. Vertical at 4-7. and seven. You're struggling again today as well at 2-7. and seven. Brightest Star has been laxing at 8-6, and six, but the impact has been fairly muted in most rounds there, so still looking for this team to come together and lock in on a winning strategy to clear out these holds from DZ, not only that, but come back into this game and still allow them to potentially take a win as things are looking very bright right now for DZ and not so much for the Oxygen side. Pam going to try to take this early fight outside of the Master Balcony as well. Once again, they're not looking like the timing is really going to work out in his favor. He's got a player nearby, but it all depends on what he potentially hears and how he reacts to this. You can see he's already pre-shot this, so one more shot, and it's going to open it wide there. No, oh, man, he didn't hear anything, so the time is not going to work out, and way too late there for Panva, obviously, as he pops it open when Dream has well crossed the divide already. That would have been a heck of a duel as well, as they were both seemingly aware of the other's position, mm. but just nobody having the gall to actually do anything about it. Oxygen will start the clear from Small Tower, yet again, just like we'd seen from a multitude of other Oregon offenses. The drones ahead, well, it'll be at least be laxing for the time being. So look into security and see if he can find himself at NJR, who's currently lying in wait inside of Kitchen. We're going to see that opponent detected outdoor spam coming in. That is more than likely just one of Hyper's clones that was chucked out there to annoy Oxygen by it's putting so that troll. big it's red so text troll. in your face until you can shoot it. I don't know if there's like a position on this map where you can throw it where like can't be shot to permanently annoy them. You can get on all of the roofs on this is it? map. Okay. So the, the, the one that was super annoying for the longest time is there's a Prisma that you can throw on border that gets on top of the uh, mm. the top but part of the roof sure. that you uh, yeah that you wouldn't you weren't able to shoot. So it would literally be on your screen constantly. But yep. yeah, as you said, I'm pretty sure they patched that out. So things continuing to devolve here inside of our ninth round. Oxygen ready to execute on DZ. You can see they are literally a wall away from fighting them. Oh, Eclipse's position is going to become so crucial here, though. As the members of Oxygen have already cleared out the front lobby, and you oh, can dream. see them taking that control. Eclipse he oh needs to wait gosh. for the right timing to engage. Oh, my gosh. There we go. Nur is a freebie. Thankfully, Dream immediately trades it out, so we don't go too crazy with the pickups there. But still, now OXG needs to make up the difference, and they failed to do so in the following season. Second, so looking to see if they can maybe find that somewhere else, whether it be by finishing off Canadian, who's already been brought down to 50 HP, or some other avenue. Oh, what? Hyper. The timing is awful. He goes for the wide swing, but apparently NJR wanted to on the other end of the hallway as well. So he ends up chopping his teammate's head off and then immediately going down himself. Canadian, though, will try to make up for this as he swings back towards the back door and knocks out Fox A, oh. somewhat restoring the balance, but unfortunately getting a tad too greedy as he goes out for one more pick and Dream will finally 
finish him off. Panba's been flashed as well. He can't see a darn thing. Second time hitting him as well here inside of security. They seem to have a good lock on where he is. This should be an oxygen round unless Panba goes absolutely massive over these next few seconds. That Prisma as well going to catch him. He tries to take out Laxing, but it's not going to be seen. And OXG picks up this round. I mean, talk about being a detriment. That round right there was no way, shape, or form going the way of Dark Zero, especially after uh, the debacle, you could say, inside of Split that went down with Hyper and NJR. Canadian doing his damnedest to try and pull it back from the depths as well. He wins out that initial engagement, but I mean, there's really no snowball's chance in hell that he's going to be able to try and take on another person in Split with that amount of HP. And I mean, just randomly blind firing, hoping somebody walks into the bullets. Yeah. So it was just, it was hard fought for Dark Zero, but definitely not the round that they were looking for coming off of that tactical timeout. Yeah, the team kill really set things in another direction, unfortunately. It looked like they might have been able to sustain in a longer fight had they kept the raids relatively even, but after that point, things devolved pretty quickly. So Dark Zero now at risk of losing the lead that they've only just now attained for themselves. Five to four lead. OXG, of course, coming in for another basement assault. However, that can be problematic for them as we've seen Dark Zero hold on to this one already earlier on in the half, and they're gonna look to pull off the same exact thing once again to lock down a sixth and potentially second to final round here. They're looking to get the opportune closeout inside of regulation to get those full three points. And it's important to remember, of course, that that matters much more for Dark Zero than it does for OXG at this point in the stage here. You can see the current standings at the top of your screen. OXG is number one, so they are pretty much secured already for the major. Don't necessarily have to fight for that. Meanwhile, 4DZ, they need to fight with every inch they have here if they still want a chance to go to the major, as they are currently sitting at number six, and there's only a few play days left. Yeah, it's a little comical that Oxygen are the gatekeeper of a major event for Dark Zero, especially with how they've played so far in this stage. Early damage dealt back and forth, but Newers will win out the initial engagement. Pambazoo trades back onto vertical, the potential to pick up Newers as well, but he's not going to re-challenge. Dark Zero, they're feeling pretty good about this. Canadian's utility didn't really mean too much overall in that situation, as his Banshees are already down, so he's just another man with a gun. But when it comes down to vertical, he's had so much impact in the past, and past that, he's Sledge and he has frag grenades. That could have been extremely useful for trying to get rid of quite a few of these pivotal positions but fortunately enough for oxygen they made the adjustment after recognizing that it was the basement site over to flores for foxe so already a minute gone from this round here but just like the previous few a relatively even exchange between both of the teams neither one getting a massive advantage out of that initial fight here the time wasted obviously favors dark zero but We've seen Oxygen execute with much, much less to work with previously, so that's not going to be a huge obstacle for them, especially now that they seemingly have most of the first floor under their control. That would apply to the second floor, too. The rest of DZ just sitting back in the bunker now that they've got a one-to-one -one trade, and they're going to wait for the play to come in. You can see they've got this kind of like almost like diamond-shaped defense going on. One player watching the laundry side, another for the stairs, another for the hallway, and one for construction here. We have a very tense near fight going on by those back stairs. Another player is able to deal any significant damage to each other. Terror drone out. Let's see if Eclipse can potentially get rid of this. He will. Dream will swing it, though, oh, and he'll bait. take down Eclipse. The Rotero bait, as you said, works out in spades for Oxygen. And now they've got the man advantage. Pambazoo doing his damnedest, though, to try and bring it back from the depths, but it'll be NJR to assist. It's a 3-2 in favor of Dark Zero at the moment. Foxy, he has to hightail it into sight because Laxing needs help, but he's already dead. He's out in construction. There's a deployable shield here, and they know exactly where Foxy is for the future, but Dark Zero do not want to give him an inch. It's a nice angle here from Pillar, but it won't be the killing blow to Foxe just yet. He'll re-challenge a deployable shield, swing back for the door, and he'll actually take down the Jaeger. Pambazoo to die, and he continues to bounce back and forth with a lot of time in order to continue this motion. Still has an extra Terra Drone, so he's going to use this, maybe try to block off the this access point so he can activity. go in and play. This is so risky, though, because as soon as they hear this, they should have pushed onto it, but no, they don't commit to it. That should have taken out the shield, so he's going to remove the reinforcement around the corner. Fox is going to 50-50 no. stop! <laughs> And JR from the grave with an impact. I've never seen it, but now I have. Shuts out the round in an incredibly comical fashion. But this one goes to DZ, and they push it up onto map and match point. Might have been one of the craziest games of catch I've ever seen, John. That impact will remove Fox A's last bit of HP, send him to the afterlife, and give Dark Zero a round that uh, was looking a little bleak just for a split second. But that able, back pillar hold. Yeah, that back pillar hold especially. And the, the resurgence there as well. I mean, initially really only having Pambo around that. Then the Wamai comes into play. NJR 
Star starts holding down that position as well, and they're able to shut down most of Oxygen's take, especially for Newer's sake. Newer's couldn't do a dang thing when it came to that tower's position. So after a fairly successful push already through construction, seemed like OXG had that avenue secured for themselves, just needed the second access point, either through Electrical or Back Pillar Room itself, but couldn't get it. As you were saying, Panba as well as NJR, the dynamic duo there, a fantastic job fending off the play from OXG. And now is going to be able to secure a sixth and potentially second to final round to the penultimate round for DZ, if you will, here. Uh, well, I'm sorry, 82% yes, but you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it's only about 33% of the way there right now, so yeah. it's looking bleak. Uh, vertical would, I mean, if he got two aces right now, he'd get it. There you go. That's something so, to go for, Vert. <laughs> When's the last time that happened? Never. I actually know that's, no, a, I've that's never, a lie. I'm pretty sure that's I've seen a, a player ace two rounds. I, I, yeah, the problem it's is it's really uncommon. I, <laughs> I don't remember who did it. I can't remember yeah. right now. I want to say it was an APAC player for some reason. But either way, we're about 20 seconds in now to the action phase here. And potentially our last round as Dark Zero have chosen to go to kids' dorms for potentially the last sight. Eclipse will be playing back inside of the kill box that we talked about earlier. This time, though, Canadian will not be along for the ride downstairs. So Eclipse is off on his own island. Let's see how long he can exist on these supplies. Very slow opener here for Moxion. You can tell they're giving Dark Zero a lot of extra respect now due to the kind of chaotic play they've thrown at Oxygen on at least more than one round here throughout the half that's been played so far. Eclipse's position going to be found out. Not that they can necessarily do anything about it just yet. <laughs> Man, you got to be careful with these nades, Oxygen. I don't know what's going on I'm today. I'm sorry, viewers. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, he just caught me it's so not even the first that. one either. I think he threw another one earlier, like banked off a corner weirdly too or uh, something. So The bounces in Siege sometimes just hit you with the weirdest things ever. Like, I'm pretty sure he threw that off the server and it came back at him. <laughs> I don't think that one's supposed to happen, but either way, Dark Zero starting to look worse for wear now after finally the initial engagement will go the way of Oxygen. Wouldn't you know it? It's Vertical who's found his mark. That ace might be on the way, John. They have like reverse jinxed it, but we'll see here now as the rest of the round transpires. Eclipse still needs to be cleared out of his security position. Newers will make that initial ascent over towards the top of White Stairs. They'll burn oh. out that canister. And on top of that, Pan Bubble will nearly find himself eliminated here. Down to just a sliver of HP as I'm pretty sure nade damage brings him that low, but unable to follow through once again. Another time that we've seen that happen as well. So we saw something fairly similar happening much earlier on in this game. A little over a minute to go, and Oxygen still has a lot of clearing to do, especially Eclipse's position, mind you, who's now going to rotate it back over towards the front laundry stairs. Though Oxygen doesn't seem to be paying too much mind to that currently. They'll worry about it later as they're focused on getting themselves upstairs and into the site. And they have to. With only 45 seconds remaining, Oxygen have got to hightail it towards the site and try and take some duels with these site players. Players. Pam Bazoo very close to that nade, but no shrapnel will go his way that would end his life. This is actually a great setup for Dark Zero, all things considered at the current moment. Oxygen's really going to need to try and find another counter angle to try and assist them with clearing out these positions. There's going to be too hard fought as they try to enter the actual site. Laxing, speaking of which, is looking for that right now as he starts to push up main stairs. Hyper will take down Dream, but with 10 seconds remaining, something's got to give, and it looks like it's going to be Oxygen and laxing and vertical. They can't find anything. They can't even get the damn case. And that's going to be the game is Dark Zero upset Oxygen. Dark Zero with a massive win here today. And they truly earn it too. We talked about it in their game versus X set yesterday about how we saw them play very, very close to the chest and very close on quite a few rounds overall. But just had a few in the moment mistakes that ended up costing them the game. It seems they showed up today versus Oxygen, fixing the large majority of those and ready to play play as they finish off and give OXG only their second loss of the stage, their second loss of the year overall here at a 7-5 to five score line. One of the best looking forms of Dark Zero that we've seen this entire stage is what it takes to take down the Titan that is Oxygen at the current moment. And not only that, but they did it in regulation. When they talked about it on the desk with Analyst Stokes, uh, they were talking a lot about how much Dark Zero needed those three points. Yep. When, well, John, they got him. Their hopes are still alive to go to the major now they have approximately a 47 percent chance of making it pending the results of their other games and i know we talked about it earlier about how oxygen should have been secure but that's actually not true especially with this loss they actually only have an 89 percent chance of going through themselves so they still have to work a little bit harder to make sure they go to the major as well that'll do it for the two of us for right now ladies and gentlemen we're gonna go to a quick break when we come back while we'll your analysts ready to break this very exciting match down
Welcome back to R6 NAL, Doa, Jacob, and Stokes here with you on the desk. Hey, Welcome back, clarify. Analyst Stokes. Analyst Stokes. Yeah, that's right. Analyst Stokes. Right. Right. Name right. Stokes. Are two different Stokes in the building today. Both that's of them right. decided to clock in at the same time. What are you, twins or something? Would you? Wh 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 uh, How'd that happen? You know, it kind of, it was at birth. We just kind of got swapped around and, you know, it was something to do with like the shape of the head. My brain was just so big. They're just like, oh, did one of you come out like head first and the other one had to get so you're like... saying Caster Stokes has a smaller brain? Yeah, of course. <laughs> there exactly we go. What I'm saying. I, was, I was wondering. I was, I, want, I needed yeah. that clarified. <laughs> as far as, far as we can tell, this is the one that didn't get dropped on its head as a child. Oh my gosh. As far as I can tell as well. I mean, like <laughs> it, it feels like all my doohickeys work, so. That's great news. That's great news. And great news for Dark Zero as well as they got the win over Oxygen. Uh, a bit of an upset. We talked about this going into it. Uh, but man, uh, Dark Zero played, I think, probably the best game they played all stage. I completely agree with you. They looked so dynamic in their play style, especially for Canadian. He looked like uh, yeah. he just had a, brush of, a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. it, it looked so, so good from him. A lot of the plays that he was calling as well, they just worked so well for Dark Zero. I really liked a lot of the uh, counter plays that he had on their right. offensive side as well, where he would, you know, find those holes and what the defense was doing, pick up one, two kills that are super critical and end up getting Dark Zero around. Sure enough. Well, speak of the man himself, we've got him standing by over in Vegas. Canadian is there to chat with us a little bit after that match. Canadian, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How you doing? All right. Hey, welcome back. Congrats on the win today. So yesterday was a little bit of a rough loss versus Xset, but you know you needed to dig deep as a squad. You know it was a must win situation today. Uh, how do you sort of like get the team ready going into a, a game like that? I mean, mo more than anything, I think it was just resetting from yesterday. Um, I think throughout the season, we've actually been playing pretty well overall. Uh, we have three losses, Parabellum, Xset, and Astralis. And Honestly, the Exet and Astralis match, uh, both of them, we felt very in control. It was just a matter of uh, making some some small mistakes to kind of give rounds back and whatnot. And okay. yeah, just resetting and playing our same kind of game from those games. And then just I personally was very trying to be very on top of the main advantages and late round and all that, just making sure that, you know, we were playing out all our situations as best we could. All right. All right, well, I only got one question for you, Troy. And you, like you were just talking about, you guys have been playing some pretty aggressive teams, some teams that are kind of playing the newer style of North America. Going into these matches, what do you feel like is the, the X factor for you guys when it comes to trying to exploit what the opposing team is doing when they're playing a style like this? Um, I think it just depends on the team. Uh, it's, it varies from team to team. I don't think all teams play like that. I think Astralis plays very different than all these other teams. I think Xset plays quite a bit different. OXG has their own, I don't know. Everyone everyone kind of kind of has their own style, so I don't think there's just a, you know, kind of one size fits all answer to that. Um, I think it just varies from team to team. Yeah, I do think Xset's style kind of at this point because of their success has been telegraphed to a degree, but if you came into this game knowing that you had to do one thing against OXG and then now having come out of it with a victory, if you had to narrow down one thing that you know you had to do coming into this matchup, do you think you did a good job? I definitely think so. I think the big thing was was just the discipline and our main advantages uh, more than anything. I think they got a couple rounds where we were undis undisciplined and because of it, you know, they got an early round advantage, mostly like them overextending for drones and stuff and us being like sloppy, not capitalizing on it and whatnot. But um, yeah, I think we did a good job of kind of tracking most of, most of the plays they like to make and just kind of keeping the round in our control. So on, on the topic of discipline then, final question before we let you go. Um, discipline, execution, uh, very big kind of hallmarks, I think, for DZ's play style. Uh, what, how do you kind of strike a balance between making everything or insisting everything goes to plan versus sometimes getting caught in situations where things are starting to play out a little bit too slowly? Um, I think it's just being mindful of the situation uh, and recognizing, you know, when the when the round is stalling out and just starting to ask questions of like, what are we droning? What are we looking for? Uh, can we take this control? Do we have this? You know, asking the right questions, making sure we're on track, that kind of stuff. Um, but I also do think that we're probably a lot less scripted and super structured than teams think. Uh, okay. I think the iteration of DZ with me is a lot different than past iterations of DZ. And I think teams that play against us know that as well. All right, interesting. All right, fascinating. Well, thanks for the uh, thanks for the words. Congratulations again on the win today. Another step in the right direction for DZ and good luck next week. Thank you very much. Have a good night, guys. Thanks. Good morning. You too.
That's a, it's both. He really just it said is, good night. It's like, well, the thing is, it's it's a, it's esports. Twelve thirty, bro. Come on. What people need to understand, and what I'm sure Canadian understands, is that esports doesn't operate on the same clock that the rest of the world does, right? Oh. We are right now. What it's like, almost noon now, or something like that. Solid That's still that. like esports early, early morning. We're talking like three a.m. 4 a.m. for esports. The fact like, that North American players are up this early to play games when I they know. scream at 7 <laughs> p.m. Come on, man. Esports morning doesn't end until like 3 p.m. normal people time, right? True. So Canadian's absolutely right. Like, it's he's looking forward to the evening already. Look at this, man. Laxing is up there in spite of losing this badly with the same number of kills as both Canadian and Hyper. I, oh. I loved how fluid Canadian was getting in this game. It wasn't just, okay, a, a couple nasty Nomad flicks. It still felt like it was moving into the same rhythm that Oxygen themselves were moving into. And throughout this game, that, can, that just continued to persist. I have a problem with Newers being down this low on the scoreboard yet again for the third yeah, straight match. That to me is more of a concern. Probably not really in a long-term thing. This seems like, a, like some kind of short-term gap in the way that OXG are playing, but overall, this is this is the kind of thing that does make you question Oxygen's status as like the bastion of North America for sure. Like, where do you go from this if you're Oxygen? I mean, is 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 the newest thing starting to become a pretty significant problem at this point? I don't think so. I, I think if anything, newers is more than likely, you know, just now getting to the point where the honeymoon phase inside of pro play yeah. is over. Makes he sense. completely skipped over Challenger League. That's the one thing that you have to notate. You know, he, he doesn't have that same experience. Yes, he has competitive experience, but it's not the same as coming to play with some of the best of the best. And now he's getting punished for that. People know his True. play style. They know the decisions that he's tending to make like, all right, Nurus, we'll, we'll see how you play now. And <laughs> it's it's not been as strong since. He's hit the first kind of hurdle as a, as a new pro, and so we'll have to see how easily he can vault over that. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to take a look at round five from this map. It was a very entertaining one. It, I think it was a good indication of DZ kind of having a great handle on this match, both at a team and individual level, because this was a rounder, if I remember right, the team situation, things kind of fell apart at first, but Canadian was able to come up clutch anyway. Yeah, Laxing has already killed NJR uh, up in, up top in Big Tower with a Nitro Cell, and Laxing's already down on low HP, but this is a case where Dark Zero are on the back foot to start this matchup, and then find a way to surge back into things. There still is the roam presence from OXG, they use this pretty consistently, it was something Dark Zero actually did a pretty good job reading into on the attack, and they ended up with a 3-3 half as a result. But if we look at, like, all of these different spots right now for OXG, they're all still congested a little bit west side right now, whereas DZ are still trying to push from Armory side of things. Newers is going to open up this, this hole even bigger, but it's down to the way the Canadian and the rest of DZ drone from west side over through bathroom, because Canadian is about to find two massive kills. If, if, this one right here, when we saw it on POV, was a huge one. He'll clear vert when they play, like, like uh, ring around the rosy with one another inside lockers, and then that entire pressure wow. from everyone on Dark Zero surges back over from Armory side as they make a successful push back toward the site. The timing is there. They pulled back a 3v5, and it's all down to excellent gunplay and timing. Yeah, I mean, you, you see rounds like that, and then you think back to people talking at the early part of the stage, like, oh, Canadian, you know, maybe it's time to retire. It's like, no, no, no. Nah. This, this guy has still got it. You know, he may never have even lost that. I don't think he ever really did. <laughs> no. You know, so th still a huge threat in this league. I think that talk, in my mind, has been very put to rest. But we're going to start looking at to our next match. But before we do, any final thoughts about this one? Stokes, does DZ have what it takes to go to the major? I think they most definitely do, yeah. There's some very, very talented players on that team. I mean, you can bring up any name, and you have a talented player on your hands. I mean, the one, the one that we don't talk about enough that, that I think should be talked about more for Dark Zero, Eclipse. He is such an incredible player, especially because he does a lot of the heavy lifting for the team. He does a lot of the things that nobody else wants to do. And somebody has to do it at the end of the day. It just so happens to be Eclipse. And past that, there's still these moments of brilliance that you get from him, whether it be a 1vx situation or, you know, there's this critical moment that he's able to overcome. It's, it's yeah. always fantastic getting to watch him play. Best part about this for Dark Zero is that they can breathe a little bit easier. Obviously, mm -hmm. three points. That's, the, that's a nice boon. But because the team that they're competing with to get to the major in Beast Coast essentially has a free three points against Mirage later in the day, they now know because they beat a team like OXG that there is an even better chance that they can stay in contention if, if Beast Coast is about to vault up and maybe still challenge them in that fourth to fifth spot. So this is nice. Obviously, they're still waiting on the result from next week to determine if they're going to go. But this is this is this is what you need for Dark Zero. Your fate needs to be in your hands and not like decided by someone else winning or losing. Yeah, they've done what they needed to do today. They got the win over Oxygen, which is huge. Really excited to see what they can do next 
next week to close things out, maybe get to that major. We are nowhere close to closing things out today here at the RS6 NAL. We have Sonics versus Space Station Gaming coming up next, so do not miss it. NAL returns in just a few.